Howdy folks, welcome back to the Knock Mile Arc. Today is leg 36, Ohio, of our 50 states tour. We're going to fly over the Crown City Wildlife Area in the V Sky Labs Micro Hopper. And I just dawned, it just dawned on me that I haven't checked to see if this thing has been updated recently. I haven't flown this in a while, I'm not sure why. I've just been flying some bigger planes lately. But we're going to go on this little thing in terrible weather. The winds are very, very light, like four or five knots. But the clouds almost come to the ground. And visibility is very low. And it's raining. Real world weather is turned on, obviously, to get those conditions. But we got a quick little 26 nautical mile flight for you. We're going to start at Greater Portsmouth Regional. Scioto, Scioto, Scioto County Airport in Wheelersburg, Ohio. And we're going to fly a short little hop to Lawrence County Airport in South Point, Ohio. So that's the plan. It's going to be a VFR flight, except we are going to put our destination in the GPS. We are going to pull up the iPad on our laps if we need to, especially because visibility is terrible. So that is the plan. Let's hop to it. Hop inside, and I think to start this thing, you just flip that, and you do the pump, and what's that thing? Battery, okay, and ignition, and you start it, right? There we go. Very simple. Turn down my sim volume. That is blurry and loud in my ears. Have half a tank of fuel all right let's see here let's do flight plan i'm gonna clear it out wherever that was i don't remember where that was i haven't flown for a while here let's see delete flight plan and put in the destination of kilo hotel tango whiskey so there's kilo hotel tango whiskey i said yeah tango like so, and whiskey, keep going towards the end of the alphabet, W, there we go, Lawrence County Air Park, here it says Air Park, what do I, oh, it is Air Park, I said it wrong, I have it written down correctly, Lawrence County Air Park in South Point, Ohio, there we go, and we're going to accept that, and I know it already has a little pink arrow by like hitting direct anyway, there we go, play plan, can't see it quite yet, can we, it's there behind us it looks like. 30 nautical miles. Ooh, so the flight distance is longer than driving distance? Because they took the driving distance on a map, converted it to nautical miles, and it was 26.3. Here we got 30.3. That's interesting. Anyway, we'll zoom this thing in and then just go to our destination. And we'll also, if we have to, pull up this map, which represents like an iPad on our laps with real life. Real life tracking where we are. So it looks like, I don't even know. I think it's down here, isn't it? Yeah, there it is, right there. Right there. So we're going to turn around and just fly over the, um, over the wildlife area, which I don't think you would really want to do in real life. But we're going to. Anyway, let's get our weather here. Uh, weather is 170 degrees at 5. So 170. Okay, good. So we'll just take off on runway 18, and we'll be almost into the wind. So we're just going to go straight and turn around take off. 3016 is our barometer. Do we have a... We must have a barometer on here somewhere, right? How else do we do... How do I change this? Do I not change it on this? Double click, single click, pushing buttons. Um, Because right now it's at 2980. <laughs> How do we make this... Uh, do we have to click here somewhere? No. Huh. Obviously... There's something I yeah I know there's a field of view. Obviously there's something I don't know, and that's how to change the barometer. Well whatever, we aren't doing IFR anyway, so we'll just use the ground. Good enough. Whoops, let's fix this. There we go. Alrighty, so I guess that's simple as that, right? So let's take off the parking brake and get rolling here. Aren't there flaps on this? I swore there were flaps. I guess I'm thinking of the the trike. I swear there are flaps on this thing. Oh well, let's slow down a little bit here. And we are going to go out to the taxiway. And then turn left and then make a U-turn and take off for number 18. And this is an unmodeled airport. And we're going to have plenty of sightseeing once we're in the air. So I will catch you at the end of the runway. Alright, we got permission here to use a midfield departure. That way once we go around this corner we can just take off from here we don't need to um back taxi to end of the runway so let's just go here let's hop in there are no lights 
to worry about, which means we probably shouldn't be flying in these conditions in real life, but we're going to, because we can. Bunch of rough altitude here. 460 feet. Alrighty, so here we go. We're just going to roll out, get a rolling start. We'll be airborne before we know it. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. It's like we're in a little go kart, except the only difference is there are wings, and eventually you go airborne. And there we go. Upsy daisy. Simple as that. It took off, took off on its own. So we don't want to go too high because we're going to get into the clouds. So what we want to do. First of all, step on the brakes to stop those wheels from spinning. There we go. I like how they didn't stop at the same time. And they're still moving a little bit from the wind. That's amazing. I never noticed that before. All right, let's not get too high because um, we're going to get into the clouds. So where do we add already? We're 300 above ground level, so that's good. We'll just trim this thing down if it will. Stay right on that red line. Go as fast as we can. And just follow the pink little line on the GPS. And then do sightseeing in the meantime. So we need to mind our altitude above ground. To mind our altitude so we stay out of those clouds. Let's look outside while we can. This thing is very difficult to fly from the outside, but we'll do the best we can. And this weather, even though this is Ohio real life weather, reminds me of Minneapolis today. It is snowing. I'm recording this on October 14th, Sunday morning. The family's at a movie. And I'm not really able to go to movies too much because the loud sounds and the um, large screens make me ill. So I take advantage. Instead of complaining about things like that, I take advantage and record videos for you all. So that's the story. My point being, this weather is exactly like Minneapolis for the most part. So that's pretty cool. I'm enjoying this weather very much. Let's see. We got some power lines to watch out for. Those are pretty much in level flight right now. I'm taking as many screenshots as I can. This is very, very attractive. Very high frame rates. Very fun aircraft. And I know V Skylabs watches some of my videos. So if they're watching this one, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Just a cute little flight today. Shorts in real time. Makes for a short video too. I'm not going to cut much out. Let's try to stay somewhat towards the pink line to keep our distance from being longer than it needs to be. Ooh, looks like we got some terrain. So we might need to climb a little bit. And um, I think in real life, we're well over the wildlife area. Well, no, because these roads, roads and things use OSD data, OBS data, ODIS. Why am I forgetting what it's called? Anyway, the roads are using real life data and there are no roads in the wildlife area. So the fact we're seeing roads here implies we're not actually over the wildlife area yet. So if we use some common sense there, that tells me we're not quite over the wildlife area, but it looks like we're about to get over it now because see how the, not only did the train change, but more importantly, the mesh changed, right? Now we've got this heavier coverage, dark on the ground, no roads, and we are very close to ground level. We are just covering those treetops, but I want to stay below the clouds. Let's get a little bit altitude. Like I said, in real life, I don't think you can really fly here, because when I looked at the airways at Sky Vector, they went around this, which would make complete sense. All right, so let's see, are we staying on that pink line? We are, except our time isn't going down because we keep drifting to the side, which is kind of funny. So even they're going along at 65 knots or so, ground speed is only 61 because we're going into the wind. Um, doesn't seem like we're making much progress, does it? Well, that's okay. So 68 knot airspeed, 63 ground speed, so that's about a four knot wind or so, three knot wind, three to five, depending on when you look, because it keeps changing constantly. Otherwise, I don't think I need to ramble the whole time. I do have lots of Ohio stories, though. Not from this area. But let's do a little bit of sightseeing, and we'll see how off I get from this autopilot, or from the um, GPS track. And then I'll tell some stories.
It sure is ominous out there, isn't it? But this is awesome. It's like IMC, but we can kind of see where we're going. But it seems like we're just not making any progress. I feel like we've been, yeah, we've been flying for like nine minutes now. And we've only covered six miles. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. That's kind of funny. Ground speed 63. I guess all that weaving back and forth from not following a straight line really adds time. If you think about race cars, right? If they don't follow the exact same racing line, they lose hundreds of seconds, hundredths of seconds. Constantly adds up to half a second, but you can, you know, go from first to tenth place in half a second. So I guess if we're weaving back and forth, we add three minutes to our flight time. So I'm trying to stay on that pink line. I zoomed in a little bit so we can be a little more careful about it, but... Anyway, let's see, what do we have for views? Do we, do we have a view out? Why have a view out the back? I thought we had a view out the right side. I guess we don't. Strange. I have a view out that side for some reason. Huh. I don't know. I should set up more views. Anyway, watch where we're going. Watch where we're going. So, stories about Ohio. So, I've talked about some of this in the past. Um, my wife and I met almost 14 years ago. When I met her, she said, well, I'm looking at, you know, grad schools for PhD. I'll be moving. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, sure, why not? My career at the time wasn't, I mean, I had two careers, but one was transferable. The other didn't really matter. So we met, got married five months later, and moved to Ohio for a year. So we can work on a PhD. And um, lots and lots and lots and lots of stories from Ohio. I don't even know where to begin um, where do we begin? Goodness. Well, thinking back, it was a crazy time of our lives, right? We were mid-twenties, and the things we did and the decisions we made made so much sense at the time. <laughs> but looking back, we were really crazy, and decisions we would never, never encourage our kids to make. Just totally fly by the seat of our pants for a couple years. But... Not out of the ordinary, right, from mid-twenties, you know, making big decisions. I had a house I had to sell, had to sell one of our cars, had to deal with my wife's extremely conservative family freaking out, um, all kinds of things like that. So we just got through it. We had to move with three cats and a turtle and some other pets, um, my best friends made a vacation out of it, so they came with us to help us move. And then after they helped us move, they just stuck around for a week and did some touristy things. And that was a surprise. They didn't tell us we were doing that. They pretty much showed up and said, we're going with you. And we're like, what? It was amazing. <laughs> and um, so that was pretty awesome. We had lots of crazy decisions. I had a hard time finding a job because we were in a super tiny college town. And the only jobs really to have were on campus if you knew somebody which I didn't know anybody, or a restaurant, which, like, being a, you know, I've talked about, I've got, like, hidden health issues, so being around food and being on my feet were not compatible with what I have going on, so, um, I had to find a job, finally found one, but just crazy, we ate out every night, we were up till three in the morning every night, and I, um, when I wasn't working, I was doing lots of need for speed, while my wife worked because she works well under pressure so she would wait until the last minute stay up till three in the morning every night for a week to get stuff done so i just play my need for speed youtube wasn't a thing yet how now i wish it were because as much gaming as i did back then and the time i had for it if i could have jumped on that youtube bandwagon back then oh man that would be my career right now for sure but it wasn't really a thing back then so it wasn't a thing until i started having kids and then by then i didn't have time for it Otherwise, what else in Ohio? Other people we met that also made really crazy, bizarre decisions. But, you know, when you're living off a graduate stipend and your significant other can hardly find a job because it's a tiny college town and you're trying to cram all this work. It was, a, it was like a high-end level one research school that she was at. So all this work you got to cram in, you do what you can. You try to maintain friendships. You're dealing with family from a thousand miles away, you do some pretty crazy things. So, nothing bad, just um, decisions I wouldn't have made, I wouldn't be making now 
nor would I advise my children. But one of the highlights, though, is when we went on our honeymoon. We left from, and we'll be talking about this more in the Tennessee video, but we just got in the car and went south. Just said we we're going on honeymoon. We had a week. We just hopped in the car, went south, and it was the best honeymoon ever. I'll tell those details when we do our Tennessee leg, because a lot of our honeymoon randomly ended up in Tennessee. But otherwise, sorry I'm kind of not being too specific. I'm being rather vague in my story time, but I don't need to bore you with particular stories. I'm just giving you an overall concept of what Ohio life was like. We did make our way to Dayton once, and we went camping in Dayton at this campground where everybody pretty much lived there for the season. And we um, asked for a rustic campsite, no power or anything, and they're like, don't you at least want power for a fan? We're like, no. They're like, okay, you're the only people who have asked for a rustic campsite in years. So we would ended up in some field along a tree line. And everybody else had their cabins and, or not cabins, their um, trailers with like permanent patios and things, stuff like that. So everybody would, you know, walk by our lonely tent in this field and just stare at us, and it's pretty funny. The swimming pool is funny too because um, it was a man-made lake-like thing. So it was a swimming pool, but it was made out of sand to look like a natural pond, but it was clearly a swimming pool because there's filtration and there was chlorine in there and it was dyed like a bluish green to be more appealing apparently. <laughs> and it was very, very strange. Um, but the only thing I remember about that is these four girls that were there that were so sunburned that I wouldn't have been surprised if they had to go to the doctor when they got home. Well, our weather's updating. Let's see here. Ooh, got heavier and our frame rates dropped. That's okay. Well, that was a fun camping trip. People thought we were crazy. The lady who did the check-in, check-out, she lived there year-round or something. She's like, yeah, my husband and I came camping here so much, I decided to just work here. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, well, we're also in Ohio. Those are the those are the big areas we covered. A lot of we did a lot of state parks. The culture was very different than Minneapolis because you're south of Mason Dixon line, so very southern compared to Minneapolis. Southern food, southern culture, southern type buildings without basements and long front lawns. Everybody had a flag in their yard. Nobody had a garage. They only had carports. The food, the accents, everything. Look at that nice crosswind. Very, very southern. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Otherwise, let's see. I think it is time to start. Yep. It's time to look at our GPS. So we're adding so much time to this flight that I'm not paying attention. But that's okay. So enough story rambling stuff. That's even That was even a bit much for me. And again, sorry it's so vague, but um, I just want to give an overall idea of what it was like in our mid-twenties, newly married, dealing with extremely conservative family who, for them, you know, you live with your parents till you pretty much get married, and you make sure your parents are involved in every decision you make, even when you're in your forties. That's the type of family my wife comes from. She couldn't be more opposite. So you can um, imagine the contention there when she's like, I'm getting married now and we're moving to Ohio and I'm going to go to grad school and I don't know what I'm doing after. My new husband is going to just find a job and maybe we'll have kids. Maybe we'll move to Europe. We don't know what we're doing. Can you imagine how well that went over with parents that are like, you're supposed to include us in every single decision, including the names of your children? That's, that's what we were dealing with. So very dramatic time in our lives. I would not want to go back. You know, when you live it, though, when you, as you're living it, it's fine, right? Like, when I used to work retail as a teenager, I loved every second of it. Could I do retail now? No, I'd puke everywhere. <laughs> but at the time, I loved it. And um, when my wife and I were living the drama, it was fine. We got through. Now, looking back, I don't know how we survived. But anyway, let's see here. My point being, I wanted to get back on track, and I also want to pull up the destination. Where's my mouse? Where are you? There you are. Pull up my destination here. I guess our line is kind of straight. Let's see, where are we? Well, we must be turning too much this way because there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're getting blown around here. I didn't do all that. Let's try to keep on track here a little bit. 
without an attitude indicator in front of my face. I guess there's a little... No, there's... Yeah, there's one right there on the iPhone. Which, again, I used to have that same iPhone. iPhone 5C in yellow. That's what that looks like. That's what I used to have. Finally had to update it, though, an iPhone 8. All right, here we go. Um, when calm. Good. So we're just going to fly straight in. Probably runway 8. That would make the most sense, right? All right, so here we go. Oh, now we have some real problems, don't we? So let's zoom this in just enough so you can see where we're going. And now we have some real problems because we cannot see what we're doing. Um, let's try to manage this here, and then I'll make a cut in the video until we get ready to do our descent and approach because we're still 12 miles out, and this really feels like an eternity of a flight. Oh, that doesn't look too bad, does it? That looks pretty awesome. All right, so we do a little bit of sightseeing. And then we'll land this little fun aircraft. Well, we're eight and a half miles out, and um, things have gotten worse, so we'll see how this goes. Not to mention, I have a hard time landing this plane anyway. For some reason, I can land a 727, but I can never land this thing. It just, it's always a mess, so hopefully, hopefully we can get something out of this here. Right now, I'm just trying to follow that pink line, and I'm using the attitude indicator on the iPhone. So I know if I'm level or not, because looking at the train and then the clouds, you cannot look out the window and determine if you're if you're flying level. You just can't. Because right now, I feel like I'm flying tilted to the right. But if you look at the attitude indicator, that would be tilted to the right. And we were actually perfectly level. But I still feel like we're really tilted to the right. So, I don't know. And I also feel like we're going like one mile an hour. <laughs> Anyway, let's look down. I thought I saw some water. Maybe not. But I see some roads again, so we probably are over the wildlife area. I would think, anyway, by this point. It wasn't the biggest thing, but um, that's fine, because now we just get to enjoy the scary scenery. Seven and a half miles now to the airport. Let me zoom this thing in a little bit. And, um... I'll check back in with you in a brief moment. So I noticed on the map here that the runway is pretty much parallel to this river. So I was thinking if we turn due south and look for this river and then just follow the river that should help us line up with this runway because the way we're coming at it now if we follow GPS we'll go over the airfield and we could always go over the center circle to land and keep an eye on that runway but let's try to follow this river so let's deviate from the GPS and then we'll come at it too once we get to the river we can redirect on the GPS and that will also line us up a little bit better let's just use this iPad map on our laps here and go south like this until you run into this river. Now let's just follow this river and see how that goes. I don't see a river out there yet. Oh, I see some blue skies though. Let's take a screenshot of that. And um, I assume this is the Ohio River, right? Because isn't the Ohio River go between Cincinnati and Kentucky? So if this is the Ohio River, that means it's going to be pretty steep hills or foothills of the Smoky Mountains or foothills of the Appalachian Mountains 
running on either side of it. So my point, I keep seeing my point being, don't I? What I'm trying to say is we're not going to be able to see the river until we're over it because it's going to be surrounded by these foothills. So where are we here? Yeah, we got a ways to go yet anyway. And we're kind of parallel to it, it says. But again, we can't see it from here. Although that's probably it right here, I would think. I imagine that's it, but we'll see. Oh boy, it looks like we're getting kind of close to the ground. Again, the train is rising on us because we're getting into the Appalachian Mountains. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to keep looking for this river, and once we spot it, we're going to follow the river and then try to make a landing here. And things just got a little worse in terms of the clouds because the cloud base is staying the same, but we're slowly increasing our altitude to clear the train. So um, I'm trying to stay right below the base of these clouds, but then we end up getting really close to the treetops. Okay, here he goes. This is the river. This must be the river because it looks all cut out. That must be the river. No, is that a freeway? Um, oh, there's a river. Yeah, there we go pop through the clouds. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to follow this river and then hopefully we will be able to see the airport which should be somewhat alongside the river. So what we're Oh, I see it. I see the runway in sight. So we're just going to go right there now because I see the runway. So let's go this way. And where did it go? Oh no. I saw it when I was looking at an angle. There it is. All right, so we got to clear this train. So let's come down a little bit lower here and then just buzz these trees. And it says wind calm. It said wind calm. If you're wondering where the river is, there it is right there. See the reflections? But we don't care about the river. We care about the runway that I just lost. Okay, so I'm so terrible at landing this thing. I really don't know why. I just am. Let's keep our speed from stalling, though. Way above that, we're almost at red line anyway. All right, let's see. So we're gonna come down alongside this hill. This is kind of a strange approach. I don't want to hit these trees, but we need to keep an eye on our descent. So let's back up a little bit here. Let's slow this thing down and come down. Where are you, runway? I see the beacon. Oh, there we go. There's the runway. All right. See how high we are above ground, but we're right barely above that train behind us, so we kind of have to nosedive it here. We're below the base of the clouds. Alright, clear these power lines. And then we will um, try to land. Obviously, we have a very, very, very long runway for what we need, so we're just going to try to be somewhat smooth. Um, it is kind of a Tal Drager type thing. But we're going to try to land all three wheels at the same time, I think. All right, here we go. Throttle is at idle, and it has been for some time. Let's just hold it off and let it land itself. Because we are in no hurry at all. Just let it land itself. There we go. There we go. And no flaps or anything, no lights or anything, no reverses. We'll just let it roll out. I guess we can try the brakes. Good, it doesn't flip over anymore. <laughs> Remember the first time we flew this, it flipped over on us. <laughs> Let's see. Let's hop outside and have a look. I don't think there's anywhere to go in particular because it's an unmodeled airport. A little bit more throttle here to roll this out with a little more hurriness. There we go. Let's um, take this one right here. There we go. Get out of the way for the others. And... Um, Try to sneak out of here before people ask us what we think we're doing in something like this, in the weather like this. Let's just go back. Let's back, not back taxi, but back track on this taxiway here a little bit. I thought I saw a building, but I guess that's just auto gen. So let's just pull over here. Try not to hit the lights if we can help it. Come on, try not to hit the lights. Get out of the way. There we go. Oh, a little bit more. Oh, get that wing off of there. There we go. And stop just like this. And I think there's a parking brake. Yes, there is. And ignition, right? And fuel pump. And GPS can come off. And battery can come off. There we go. And then we get that weird sound that's still there. 
Alright, let's stop outside. Hopefully you enjoyed the flight. Hopefully you enjoyed the stories. I know a lot of you come here for my stories, and I usually give more detailed, interesting stories. Sorry, it's so vague today. But if that's the first time you've heard story time, don't give up. Check out some other videos on the channel and check out the videos to come. We'll do more story time for sure. Always welcome to Ohio from Ohio. Hopefully you enjoyed the flight. I certainly did. If everybody's a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. If you found me by accident or another way, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends. We're almost at 500 subscribers. Let's grow this thing so that I can afford <laughs> rudder pedals. <laughs> That's my new goal. I really want rudder pedals. So enough to use my yoke is rudder control. But I'm not going to get into that today. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Otherwise, thank you for flying with me. And I'll catch you on the next one.